Hello everyone, my name is Kavya Sriram and I'm a senior manager at uh, Deloitte and today I'll be sharing with you some highlights of our own generative AI journey um, and uh, how we've been using this very powerful technology to deliver value to our clients and, and ourselves. And I have uh, my colleague here with me. Hi everyone, my name is Maher Khalil, I'm also a senior manager at Deloitte and really excited to be showcasing the work that we've been doing. Okay. I'm sure many of you, um, you know, as you started your own generative AI journeys, you probably identified a set of use cases, prioritized them based on business impact, and then built applications, generative AI powered applications for each of those. And we at Deloitte sort of started our journey in much the same way. But very quickly, we identified that the sheer number of use cases was overwhelmingly large. And if we needed to move fast enough, we needed a slightly different approach. And uh, something that was more decentralized, where the build of the use cases was democratized, where you could have even our business users essentially building their own apps, but taking advantage of a, a common framework, uh, gov governance and guardrails that was more centrally controlled. And that really brought uh, generative, uh, De Deloitte AI Studio into being. That's what it is. It's a way for you to build your own applications uh, through a no-code, low-code, or pro-code approach. And in today's uh, sort of conversation, we'll show you uh, demonstrations of the studio in action. Uh, but before that, let's talk a little bit about uh, a couple of foundational principles that uh, this platform is anchored on. Uh, the first one is one of technical abstraction. So we recognize that you're going to have to bring to bear a multitude of technologies, generative AI and otherwise, if you want to uh, deliver on a use case end to end. Um, and these may change depending on the type of use case. So how do we enable these users who are building their applications to pick and choose from an entire set and not be worried about, you know, how do you integrate this particular technology for my app? Um, the second key thing is one of business abstraction. So what do I mean by that, right? If you look at the variety of generative AI use cases that come your way, you'll quickly start to identify common patterns, content generation, structured data analytics, conversational agents. So if you are able to solve for these common patterns by prepackaging capabilities, even prompts, then you're really moving the needle with respect to how fast you can activate these use cases. Uh, and of course, you want to make sure that even though you're democratizing the build, they're all enterprise grade, right? So ensuring that the guardrails, the security frameworks used can be centrally controlled. Um, so that's essentially the, the three foundational uh, sort of uh, uh, functionalities. And to tell us a little more about the components of the platform, I'll hand it over to Maher. Yep, so we have some foundational components that really make up our solution. So the first one is our knowledge catalog, which is really a combination of three different things. Uh, the first is your storage. So this could be your cloud storage, could be network drives, but really it contains some kind of unstructured data most of the time. Uh, you can build off of that and then create a vector catalog. So this is how you can actually take this unstructured information, create uh, vector representations of that uh, data, so that way you can better search across it. And then you have your traditional databases. So this is your SQL or NoSQL databases that contains information that you also want to incorporate into your application. Uh, that really makes up the knowledge catalog. In addition to that, you do have the model catalog. Now, uh, this model catalog can contain things like your commercially hosted models. So Gemini, through Vertex AI, and everything else like that. But it could also store a lot of open source models. So a whole bunch of models and hugging face that you want to also incorporate or that you want to use as a foundational model and uh, fine tune and train uh, for your specific use cases. Now, these different resources are combined together to create your app catalog. And the app catalog is really the business application that you're exposing for your users. Now, across the board, all of this does have access management as well as logging and metering. You want to make sure that you're able to calculate the costs correctly across the different business units that are using these applications. Uh, so tracking things like the token lens and other things like that to ensure that uh, you do have the proper logging in place uh, from a governance perspective. Uh, the other foundational component is uh, we've abstracted out and created our own SDK on top of these different components. So, 
uh, as an application developer, you don't have to upskill uh, to every single unique API that exists for the different databases, the different vector DBs, the different models. Instead, you can use a unified uh, layer in terms of accessing them. And this really allows you to, one, switch across these very quickly. You don't have to rework your application just because you want to change what type of vector database you're using. Uh, and in addition to that, uh, it also allows us to work better with our clients' existing infrastructure. Our clients are already using specific technologies. We don't want them to have to shift from their existing partners, but leveraging those existing partners into their solutions. And with that, we'll go into the different personas that can utilize this. So this little pyramid here shows that entire range of personas that we want to cater to. Uh, in the demos, we'll sort of work our way from the bottom up, uh, starting with the, the no-code version for our business users, the non-technical users, and then we'll, we'll show you the pro-code and the developer versions. Uh, so the first one I have here is a demo for the, the non-technical users. So I'll show you two uh, different use cases. The first one is a content engine, which is a content generation use case. The second one is a knowledge extraction, which is, you know, putting a, a set of data and being able to query it and, and get information. Um, so the journey really starts at the marketplace. This is where we have our templates, predefined templates addressing the variety of, of generative AI use cases. Uh, you sort of come in here, you pick the ones that most suit your use case and uh, create your own customized templatized workspace. The second thing that you do is you're able to then pick and choose the, the tech stack you want to bring to bear, right? So it includes the models, the vector store, the embedding model, the, uh, the, form, uh, the, the extraction engine, so on and so forth. Once those choices have been made, um, in the case of the knowledge extraction, the first thing that you want to do is bring your data into the system. Remember, this is for non-technical users, so you can upload information directly from your local machine, or we offer connectors to pull data more systematically from upstream systems. Behind the scenes, all of these files are going through a series of workflow steps, extracting data, so on and so forth, till they essentially get vectorized and stored. So uh, let's go into our, our conversational agent, and we'll probably pause here for a second. Um, so um, the, the key piece here is everyone's played around with conversational agents, right? But the differentiation that we offer is the fact that you can bring to bear your own your, your series of models, right? So if you can play, you'll start to see here, I can either use a pre-trained model, or if I chose to bring my own uh, model, if you can pause there again, uh, uh, if, I, if I wanted to sort of bring in my own model that I had fine-tuned, you can use that seamlessly. If you wanted to use a combination of models in sort of a maker-checker approach, where one model is the test LLM and the other one is a validation LLM, that's another way where you can sort of really leverage the power of this multi-model sort of uh, framework. Um, now let's talk about prompts, right? So if you continue, um, uh, we all recognize that the prompt building aspect is very key to building your generative AI application. So to ease this process, we offer an enterprise-wide library of pre-trained, pre-built, pre-tested prompts that can serve as a starting point. Uh, to the extent you do need to create your prompt from scratch, offering sort of a guided approach where this business user is sort of cued to the 10 things you need to think about when you're writing a prompt. So let's see how all of this comes together to build your end application, right? So this is a marketing content generation app that was built without writing a line of code in a matter of hours. We were able to program the prompts, the inputs that the user needs to enter, and on the right-hand side, organize the outputs, which could be a combination of text and image. And my favorite part about this is the fact that you can actually interact with each one of these outputs take a look at the prompts that are powering them, refine it, rerun it, engage in a conversation with generative AI to refine these prompts or trace back to the source that was, that was leveraged. And your journey sort of ends back in that marketplace where we started because you now publish this built application for broader use in the very same place. So that's sort of how you take things to production. And one last call out is the fact that uh, Maher mentioned it's a very detailed tracking to make sure that you have a good estimation of how much your app will cost when it's prime time and when you want to run it in production. So I guess to talk more about the, the pro code and the developer versions, I'll hand it off to uh, Maher. 
Yep. So what we're going to do now is uh, kind of take it up a gear from a developer perspective. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to productionalize and create our own agent. So here, we're defining the name of the agent, adding some tags. And we're going to select from our model catalog which LLM we want to use. Now, in this case, we have a prompt. It's a very simple one. It's supposing you're a doctor. And we're going to basically put in some hooks here for different inputs that we want to create within our prompt. In this case, it's going to be uh, our cough, uh, sore throat, and then the medications. And we have different ways of filling in this information. It could come from input, uh, it could come from a dropdown, or it could come from your databases, uh, vector DBs, uh, and so forth. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create this. And it's going to land us into our, um, uh, our application. And we can go ahead and start to edit it. So you can see here, you know, I provided an example that had existing results, but uh, I want to genericize them. These are really just symptoms um, that I want to uh, allow the user to input, as well as remedies instead of a medication. And you can save this. And then you can actually go ahead and run this. So this is a full-fledged application that you can now interact with that we just created uh, through this video just as we're clicking. And once you submit it, it's going to go ahead and run this against uh, the model to bring back the results. Now, there are a lot of ways that you can edit this and use this as a starting point. So if I go back to the edit, you know, we have a drop down of menu for you to bring in additional components. You can also add in visualizations. So again, it's not just using the model, but you can also interact with databases and other things. Now, what really backs up this um, uh, ProCode environment is a notebook. So we actually have a notebook here. And uh, what we're doing is just showing an example where you can also execute against the database and bring in that information. Uh, but this really allows you to kind of bridge the gap between your no-code environment uh, and a low-code environment to also allowing your uh, data scientists to also actually utilize this environment as well. Um, what you were also seeing at the end there was uh, the ability to actually call this as a REST API. So again, think of this agent not just existing by itself, but your clients could have legacy applications that they don't want to rework. They instead want to bring Gen AI into those applications as easily as possible so you could start off a cascade of automated workers or agents to actually kick off that process as well. So that's kind of our pro code um, environment. And the last thing that we want to kind of dive into is our um, developer demo. And this is where you're kind of going full-fledged as uh, a developer being able to utilize uh, the application. So uh, what you're seeing here is a side-by-side. -side. Uh, what you're going to do is you're going to create uh, your access keys. So again, your authorization is still going to be maintained even if you're going into the developer mode. Don't worry, these keys have been deleted. Uh, but what you can do is you can then mock yourself as a user. And in this case, we're going to be basically running a streamlit application, which is very popular for prototyping among data scientists for Gen AI use cases. So here, what you're seeing is we have our uh, import AI server at the top, which is our SDK. We're basically connecting to the server. And what you're seeing there is we're creating our model engine. This is that abstraction layer that we're providing. You don't have to worry about the specific implementation for uh, this model. Instead, you can just use uh, the generic uh, abstraction that we provide that makes it easier. So if you wanted to switch the specific model, what you're seeing there is that GUID for that model engine ID. You would be able to switch that out. So you could go from uh, a Llama-based model to uh, a Gemini model all through just changing that GUID without actually having to do any application restructuring at all. And this is just a very quick example. You could obviously do this with Jupyter Notebook as well. So whatever that developer environment uh, that uh, is already being used within the enterprise, we can still maintain that for your developers. They don't have to switch gears just to be able to utilize our platform.